Good afternoon. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Wish Do It Captain Kid. This watch is available from wishdoitwatches.com for $469. US dollars. You can use the discount code NEW15 to get 15% discount off the $469 US dollars, and that will reduce the price to $398 US dollars respectively. So firstly, let's look at the box that the watch comes in, and then I'll talk you through the other items one gets with a piece. So the watch comes in a travel case which comes inside a cardboard watch box and this black cardboard outer sleeve protects the cardboard watch box. So one removes the sleeve, this is the watch box itself, one removes the lid and there's a piece of foam protecting the travel case which I'll show you. So as you can see the travel case is embossed with Wish Do It and the brand emblem contrasting white stitching around the perimeter and two stainless steel rivets and finished to a good standard but it's made from vinyl rather than being genuine leather at this price point 398 US dollars I would prefer to see a genuine leather travel case inside is fully upholstered with a grey velour fabric and the watch sits on a padded pillow cushion as one would expect and this is also upholstered with a matching grey velour fabric to a good standard so nice presentation but just a disappointment that it isn't genuine leather and it's made from vinyl leather with regards to the other items, one only gets this, which is a Wish Do It branded microfiber polishing cloth. I always think it's a nice touch to get a branded microfiber polishing cloth, irrespective of the price point of a piece. But however, it is wholly unacceptable to have no owner's instruction manual and no warranty card. This watch is supposedly covered by a 180 day return policy, which sounds very impressive, and it's also supposedly covered by a five year international warranty, which again is very impressive. But without a warranty card for proof of purchase and without an owner's instruction manual, there is no detail of the 180 day return policy and there is no detail of the five year warranty. So that's a worry and I would have my doubts on Wish Do It honouring the five year warranty and the 180 day return policy with the absence of a warranty card or owner's instruction manual. Really at 398 US dollars one has to expect a warranty card and owner's instruction manual. We are seeing this with watches that are under 100 US dollars. So with regards to the specifications of the piece, this is the Wish Do It Pirate Captain Kid. The watch is clearly on a mask to the Richard Mille RM1103. So very similar proportions and very similar design to the RM1103. We have a 43mm case diameter. We have a 50.6mm lug to lug measurement, a thickness of 15.2mm. The width of the integrated lugs at the widest point is 29.2mm. The strap tapers from 29.2mm at the widest point of the integrated lugs down to 20mm at the buckle and tang. And as you can see, the solid 316L grade stainless steel buckle and tang is signed to a high standard with the Wish Do It brand emblem engraved. Nice curved profile and detailing to the buckle, good heavy gauge to the stainless steel, no sharp edges, no burrs, and good quality brass satin finish to the top side, underside and flanks of the buckle. Two keepers, one is fixed and one slides and good attention to detail because there are two nodules either side of the first keeper and that engages the first keeper on the strap so it prevents the first keeper sliding out of position and the second keeper is free to float up and down the strap to get the correct position. Now with regards to the specification I want to bring something to your attention. Wish Do It on their website states the specification of this strap as being fluorine rubber which is FKM rubber. But I can tell you that this is not fluorine rubber, it is silicon rubber. Silicon rubber is very soft and supple and it's a characteristic that it's very soft and one can immediately discern the difference between FKM vulcanized rubber and silicon rubber respectively because FKM fluorine and also vulcanized rubber are very stiff, they are very hard and therefore not as flexible and supple. This is clearly silicon rubber which is a cost cutting measure. And the reason why I wish to do it to have used silicon rubber is because it's significantly less expensive than using an FKM fluorine rubber strap. But on their website, they have stated this is fluorine, which is incorrect. It's actually silicon rubber. I've previously reviewed similar watches such as the Sega design and also Saar Bomber. And they also have a similar strap design, which is vented like the Richard Mille RM1103, which this is an homage to. But those straps were actually made from FKM fluorine rubber rather than silicon and they were stiffer so this feels very much like a silicon rubber strap and it's wholly unacceptable for Wish Do It to state it's fluorine when actually it's silicon. Now the other aspect of the specification I want to bring to your attention is 
Wish to it watches state on their website that this curved crystal is made from sapphire, but I've tested it and it's actually mineral crystal. And again, this is wholly unacceptable. They shouldn't be advertising the watch as having a sapphire crystal when in fact it's mineral crystal. It's another clear cost cutting measure. Mineral crystal is of course significantly less expensive than sapphire, so therefore it's a production cost cutting measure. And the negative of this mineral crystal is there is no AR coating. When I tilt the piece at an oblique angle, you can see it's highly reflective and there's a lot of glare because of the curved profile to it and it really would benefit from clear AR coating on the underside. So it's not sapphire crystal as stated, it's actually mineral crystal and I don't want you to buy the watch and then accuse me of lying about the specification saying it's sapphire when actually it's mineral crystal. With regards to the rest of the specification, we have a push-pull crown and as you can see coin edge finished and it's also embossed with a turbine profile to it. Now the crown is oversized as you can see. I think they've made it too large, they should have reduced the profile of it and also the diameter. It's weak specification to have a push-pull crown at this price point, 398 US dollars. One would expect a screw-down crown providing an effective hermetic seal to 200 meters. This push-pull crown only provides 50 meters of water resistance, which really is the minimum. Even with a push-pull crown, one can expect 100 meters of hermetic seal. So 50 meters clearly is poor build quality, and I really think they need to upgrade this to a screw-down crown and upgrade it to a minimum of 100 meters if it's a push-pull crown, or a alternatively a minimum of 200 meters if they upgrade it to a screw down crown. So as it's a push-pull crown in the closed position one can manually wind the movement to its maximum ATL power reserve. So let's test the push-pull crown execution. So manually winding the movement takes a long time. Typically with 40 hour power reserve automatic movements it takes 40 clockwise full turns to manually wind the movement to its maximum 40 hour power reserve from when it's stopped dead. Now the negative of having an 80 hour power reserve movement is that it takes typically 80 turns clockwise to fully wind it because the tension in the mainspring takes longer to build up because it has double the power reserve. It has 80 hours power reserve versus 40 but therefore one has to wind it circa 80 times rather than circa 40 times. So it takes a long time to manually wind although it is an automatic so it can be wound automatically by the rotor. So pulling out the crown so the first click position is the time setting position. Light resistance to the movement. No back play clockwise and anti-clockwise, which is good. It does feel smooth. One doesn't feel friction in the gearing, which is a positive. It does have hacking. If you look at the second hand, you can see I have now hacked the second hand dead. So it's possible to set the time precisely to the second. So it does feel smooth, both clockwise and anti-clockwise. Pushing it back in, it's got a nice positive click and that restarts the movement. You can see the second hand begins to sweep around the skeletonized dial once again. So the negative is it takes a long time to wind and the negative is it only has 50 meters of hermetic seal. But it does feel smooth and it does pull out and click back in with a positive click which is good. So the front of the piece is glazed with a curved um, mineral crystal rather than sapphire and also there's another cross cutting measure because the back of the case which is a screwed down exhibition case back is also glazed with mineral crystal rather than sapphire so clear cross cutting measures although having said that the screwed down case back is finished to an acceptable standard no sharp edges to the flanks and we have four screws securing it to the body of the case with regards to the movements, they've skeletonized the rotor and it's also anodized in an anthracite grey to a nice finish. The quality of the finishing to the skeletonized bridges to the movement and also the skeletonized rotor are done to an acceptable standard, although some of the edges, the bevels are rough and therefore they, there is room for improvement with regards to the finishing to the bridges and also the rotor. But it's nice to have an exhibition case back to display the skeletonized movement and also the skeletonized rotor as you can see. Right, so I'll give you a wrist shot and you can see how it fits on my 8 inch wrist. Now this is a tall piece, it's very top heavy. 15.2 millimeters means that it's very thick. The strap is a fraction too short for my 8 inch wrist. I can just engage the strap in the first keeper but it's a fraction too short for the second keeper. So really the maximum wrist size this strap will support is 7.5 inches. If you have an 8 inch wrist you'll require a longer strap and that's going to be a problem because it's an integrated strap secured by these two screws. So it doesn't use conventional spring bars and therefore one cannot change the strap for alternatives. One has to purchase additional straps from which to it watches because it has to have the integrated style strap 
which fit to the two screws. But having said that, the silicon rubber strap, which isn't fluorine as I've discussed, is very soft and supple, so the positive is it is comfortable, but the negative is that silicon rubber is softer and therefore it's more prone to splitting and cracking, especially around the case end. So it would actually be better had they used FKM or vulcanized rubber. A fluorine rubber strap would have been stiffer, but it would have been more durable because the problem with these integrated style lugs is that this end of the strap, the head of the piece end, is prone to a lot of flexing and therefore they do split and crack with regular daily wear. And that's the reason why FKM fluorine rubber straps are used on these Richard Mill RM1103 homages. And because they're more durable, it really is impractical to use a silicon rubber strap, which isn't going to last. But having said that, it is a surprisingly comfortable piece because it's only 127 grams. Bearing in mind it's a large piece of 43 millimeters by 50.6 lug to lug, one would expect it to be in excess of 150 grams. So large head of the piece, it does wear with wrist presence. Now the thing to note is it is incredibly tall with a large slab size to the flanks. So needless to say at 15.2 this is not going to easily slip underneath a shirt cuff if you wear business shirts and therefore it makes it an impractical daily wear piece. 13mm is the sweet spot for a watch to easily slip under the wrist. At 15.2 this clearly is not going to slip underneath the cuff of a shirt and that's something to bear in mind. It does feel like a very top heavy piece despite being only 127 grams on the silicon rubber strap. So they could have reduced the thickness to circa 14mm, that would have made it more wearable and less top heavy. They also should have shortened the lug to lug measurement because 50.6 is rather long even though this is a, a large 43mm head of the piece. The sweet spot, the perfect lug to lug measurement is 48. So had they reduced it to 48 lug to lug, it would have made it more wearable and also it would have curved around the wrist better because it does feel like a tall slab of 316L grade stainless steel sitting on top of the wrist rather than curving around it despite the curved profile of the case and the mineral crystal. So top heavy piece, although it does feel light, and it doesn't feel very well balanced on this silicon rubber strap, although they have got the taper correct, tapering from 29.2 at the integrated lugs down to 20 millimeters at the buckle and tang. So reasonably comfortable to wear, but not a piece you're going to wear for long periods of time, such as eight to 12 hours per day due to the thickness of it at 15.2 and the top heavy nature of it. And although it is an aesthetically pleasing piece, if you do like Richard Mille RM1103 homages. Right, so let's do a loom test and we'll see how the loom performs when it's charged up to the absolute maximum. So as always, I'm going to use my 100 UV LED torch to charge it up to the absolute peak. Right, so that's now fully charged and as you can see, the loom performance is okay. They've clearly used C3 Luminova rather than C3 Superluminova or BGW9 Superluminova. So there's a good colour tone match between the skeletonized hands and also the applied indices and the applied 9 and 3 Arabic numerals. Now, the symmetry of the dial is good, bearing in mind it's skeletonized, it is difficult to apply indices to skeletonized bridges of the movement. Effectively, the skeletonized movement becomes the dial itself. So it's good that they have applied the symmetrical indices because it does give good orientation to the dial. It's often a problem with Richard Mille homages. The indices aren't applied and there isn't any loom and therefore it's hard to read the time in the dark. So yes, one can read the time, uh, although I think the hands are undersized. They should have scaled up the proportion, which would have allowed for thicker layers of Luminova to be applied, five to six layers. This is clearly two to three layers, which is a cost-cutting measure, both on the applied indices, the applied Arabic numerals, and also the hands. And as you can see, the negative of two to three layers of C3 is that it, the loom is beginning to fade quickly and it will fade to nothing very fast. So had they used five to six layers of C3 Superluminova or BGW9 Superluminova, that would have enhanced the performance. But the loom performance is okay. However, I would describe it as disappointing for 398 US dollars. One really has to have Superluminova rather than Luminova at this price point. Right, so let's discuss the movement used. Now, Wish Do It watches are claiming this is an in-house caliber, but I doubt that this is in-house because it looks very similar to other uh, skeletonized movements which I've seen with the same ATR power reserve. But however, 
I'm going to declare it as in-house because that is what Wish, Wish Do It have stated. So it's an automatic skeletonized movement with 21 joules. It runs at 28,800 vibrations per hour and a frequency of 4 hertz. It has hand winding and hacking which use all complications and the 80 hour power reserve is very impressive. Although the negative is it takes a long time to manually wind as I've discussed. If it had 40 hours one could manually wind it to its maximum in 40 turns but this takes circa 80 turns so it is very laborious and time consuming to manually wind it. I don't know what the stated accuracy of the movement is because they haven't stated it but I can tell you that when this one is fully wound to its maximum 80 hours it is running consistently at plus 8 seconds per day which is acceptable. 8 seconds per day is okay for a 21 joule movement running with 80 hours of power reserve. So the decoration is done to an okay standard. The skeletonization on the bridges and the rotor add interest although there is some room for improvement with regards to the finishing because there are some rough edges to the bevels to the bridges and also the rotor and bear in mind we're not looking at a hundred US dollar watch we're looking at a piece which is 398 US dollars and one really has to see more refinements at this price point rather than rough edges on the bevels of the movements which is skeletonized so 80 hours is good but however I dislike the fact that it takes a lot of manual winding and also dislike the fact that it doesn't have a bi-directional winding rotor this is unidirectional so what that means is the rotor has to spin anti-clockwise in order to wind the movement automatically. When the rotor spins clockwise it has negligible winding effect so therefore it's not as efficient as a bi-directional winding movement and that is something to bear in mind. Yes it's good to have the option of manually winding or automatically winding the movement to 80 hours but unless you wear this for 8 to 12 hours per day that isn't going to be enough daily wear to wind it to 80 hours so really the benefits of the 80 hour power reserve is lost unless you're going to wear it for 8 to 12 hours per day. If you wear this in rotation with other pieces in the collection you're going to have to top it up by manually winding it and of course that's going to take 80 clockwise turns of the crown to fully wind it. So these are the things to consider. It's a time consuming piece to manually wind and of course it's not practical to wear it for 8 to 12 hours per day because it's 15.2 millimeters thick and very top heavy. So after a couple of hours of wearing it, it does feel heavy, top heavy and uncomfortable to wear. So difficult to wear it for 8 to 12 in order to fully wind it to 80 hours. Right, so lastly I'll summarise the piece. What do I think of it overall? Well, when I'm considering reviewing a watch on my channel, the Watch Me 2 criteria should be both excellent quality and excellent value at the respective price point. So 469 US dollars is the price point but using the discount code NEW15 you can get 15% off that price which reduces it to 398 US dollars. So I'm going to evaluate the piece based on the 398 US dollar discounted price. I'm going to declare it poor quality and I'm going to declare it poor value at 398 US dollars. Yes, it's finished to an acceptable standard. The brush satin finishing to the top of the case, the flanks and the case back are acceptable. The bevel is polished to a, an acceptable finish on the top edge of the case, which marks the transition between the top of the case and the flanks. But however, there are some rough areas on the brush satin finishing and there is room for improvement. We're not looking at a hundred US dollar watch here. This is 398 US dollars. And for this price point, one has to get perfect brush satin finishing and perfect mirror polishing with no flaws in the finishing. The problem with this watch is there are two cost cutting measures, uh, too many cost cutting measures because we have a, a mineral crystal rather than sapphire, no AR coating, only 50 meters rather than 100 meters of hermetic seal on the crown and also the screw down case back. And also we have the use of silicon rubber rather than FKM fluorine rubber which is a clear cost cutting measure. So it's wholly unacceptable to have a 398 US dollar piece using a mineral crystal with no AR, 50 meters and a silicon rubber strap. And also it's unacceptable to have no warranty card and no owner's instruction manual but at the same time claim it's 180 day return policy and also five year warranty. So really I think that we should do it need to stop making these erroneous claims with this, the specification and also if they're going to offer a five year warranty and 180 day return policy they really need to back that up with a stamped and dated warranty card and also an owner's instruction manual which details the terms and conditions of the warranty and the return policy. So poor quality, poor value, there are better options at 398 US dollars. If you like Richard Mille homages to the RM1103, 
I would urge you to also consider the Seeger Design and also consider the Saar Bomber because they're both less expensive than 398 US dollars, but they are better quality and better value at the respective price point. So hope you've liked my review of the Wish Do It Captain Kid. Please feel free to post your own comments below the video. Thank you very much.